For this week here in Rutland, we are going to be focusing inward together on the loss of one of our own. Uh, we owe Detective John D. Sanji a great debt, not only for his exemplary police work for the town of Rutland over the past eight years, but for the very, very public sharing of every step of John's battle with COVID-19 over the past month plus. In that sharing, Detective Sanji and his wife, Joanne, privileged our community with an intimate, personal, detailed story of one person's fight against this virus, and, and that made it personal for all of us. Um, Detective Sanji's police work relied on evidence, yet in this it was the detective himself who provided evidence of the ravages this terrible virus can wreak on even the strongest among us. His heroism did not end with a gunshot, car chase, but it was heroism nonetheless, not only in the extended battle itself, but in the sharing of that battle through his wife with so many others. The death of Detective Sanji has touched this town deeply. It should not have to be lost that brings people together, but in this loss we will stand together. This Thursday we, along with his colleagues, friends, and supporters from across the state and beyond, will stand respectfully, separately, and somberly outside the church as the funeral goes, and we respectfully ask that spectators do the same. Our thoughts are with Joanne and John's extended family, friends, and circles in the Rutland Police Department during this tra tragic time. Rest in peace, Detective John Sanji. Your department has the watch. And can we... Thank you very much. All right, and we still have to move forward with business, so here we go. Um, under our agenda, first thing, we have our minutes, as usual, Treasury Warrant and Payroll. Could I get a motion to sign Treasury Warrant or Warrant 25 and Payroll? So moved. Stillings. Whiteman, second. Roll call, please. Stillings, aye. City, aye. Whiteman, aye. Uh, I think Wayne is muted. Wayne, if you want to just raise your hand, um, and we'll get a get a call after. Yep. And um, for you, Wayne. Walker, I. Thank you. And Dibai, unanimous. We have one set of minutes from May 18th. Motion will approve the minutes from May 18th. Stillings. Second. Roll call. Stillings, aye. City, aye. Wait, Manai. Walker, I. And Dubai. Unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, we're Phil, I need to open the meeting for the FinCom. Okay. So FinCom is going to open at 6.20 p.m. Thank okay. You. you got fan fan music? Yeah, the FinCom has, yeah, FinCom has a... Uh, a score to go with their meetings. Uh, is, there, is there anyone here, Mike, and ready for public comment? Uh, if you are here for public comment, you can either raise your hand in front of your screen or use the reactions um, option at the bottom of your screen. And I will go through the 26 participants we have here. I'm not seeing any at this time. Okay. So I know we have a couple of guests here tonight. If you have something you would like to say, I will return to public comment after a couple of other items that we care for. Again, you can raise your hand just like you do in class. Um, you can't speak during all parts of the meeting, uh, but I will circle back to public comment and see if anybody wants to join us at that point to ask us questions, all right? All right, we're gonna move on. There was nobody, Mike, again? I'll check again. If, again, if you are here for public comment, just please raise your hand in front of your screen. Not at this time. Okay. Um, and we really appreciate everyone's patience with us as we go out of order, as we often have, in order to accommodate guests uh, and some other time constraints. And tonight we will go out of order uh, as well as usual these days, go straight down to uh, number seven that you'll see on your agenda, which is correspondence. And that is number 126. So we have Mass Cop Local 399 here. And we have. Um... Union President Officer Dominic Walker, 
uh, and uh, Chief Monaco, who is here from the police department as well. Welcome. You have the floor, gentlemen. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, Chief Monaco from the police department. Um, first, while I have the floor, I just want to say thank you to the board. Uh, thank you to each and every one of you for reaching out to us and extending your sympathies and extending all your support. Um, most importantly, thank you to the entire community. It's been absolutely unbelievable showing of support for John, this department, his family. It's, uh, it's blown us all away. So thank you very much. Uh, um, Basically, we're, we're here tonight to talk to you on, you know, I'm standing in solidarity with the Patrolman's Union on this, on this matter. Um, Detective Sanji gave his life in service of his community. Um, you know, unlike a traditional line of duty death where, you know, we experience a murder or a car accident, we have a situation here where John contracted a, a very serious virus that's part of a global pandemic. And, um, you know, it's quite possible that he contracted this virus while working for the town of Rutland, maybe from one of us or maybe from when he, one of the many members of the public that, uh, that he dealt with in service to the community before being diagnosed. And, um, you know, we're here to talk to the board tonight about that. And uh, as far as our request, I think I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Shapiro for right now. I think he might be able to speak a little more on it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chief. And, and thank you to the board for uh, allowing me to, to speak. And, and thank you. I know that you guys have, you know, been with John during this, this ordeal. And I, I'm, I know that the members of the union uh, appreciate that. Um, so w what the union has requested is that for the period that John was out of uh, work, Work, which I think goes back to April 23rd, that he be carried for that period until his passing under the state injured on duty benefits statute, which is chapter 41, section 111F. And for that, what, what that would do is just for that approximate five week period, it would allow the compensation that he received um, to be paid without any taxes being deducted, like a workers' compensation uh, provision. Um, so that's that's really what the request is from the union on behalf of John. My apologies, Attorney Shapiro. I forgot to mention you when I mentioned the other two. That's okay. I, I appreciate the, uh, the 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 invite. Sheila, to the chair. So obviously this was listed under correspondence. This is um, a serious time sensitive item that the board needs to take under advisement. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, as far as research that Mike needs to do on this topic? Um, Sheila, to the chair, Jeff. Yep. So I, I did review the uh, the memorandum from uh, MassCop Local 399, uh, Officer Walker, in there, and uh, it appears reasonable. Is is there anything that's outstanding that would require us to uh, delay deciding this tonight to uh, acknowledge Chapter 41 111F that this was uh, um, this was work related, a line of duty related injury and passing. Is there, is there additional, um, is, is there anything additional that would delay us Mike. from being able to approve this tonight? Mike, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, acknowledging of Chapter 111F would uh, simply uh, work towards making it so that, that um, the family of Detective Sanji didn't have to have income tax taken out of his um, pay that he received for the period in which he was um, with COVID-19 uh, for that five-week period that's there. The, um, in terms of um, line of duty death, um, we are working with Cabot Insurance, to, to, um, who's our insurance provider for our accidental, um, excuse me, uh, work-related death. 
policy uh, as to what that would be covered with there. Please, we I would like to say with that too that um, the benefits that uh, the family would receive are written into state law um, as to what they are entitled to. Um, the um, insurance company just determines how much and if any of that they pay. However, um, the benefits that the family receives are the legal benefits that are there. Okay. Go ahead, attorney. Uh, thank you. Uh, just under there is a federal statute also, which uh, covers death and line of duty benefits, and uh, there was an advisory from the Justice Department in April of this year saying that the um, Department of Justice considers uh, a, a police officer who dies from COVID to that there's a, basically a presumption that the officer contracted the disease on the job. And uh, because Officer Sanji was working during this period and, you know, frankly, there's no way of proving, you know, 100% anything with this, with this virus, that it, it seems pretty uh, clear that he would definitely, uh, that his family would get the federal benefit. The state benefit is a, is a different matter. Um, but it, it looks like he would qualify for the for the federal benefit. Can I can I ask Attorney Shapiro? Um, I know I think the states of California, New York, have seen line of duty deaths. Do we do we have some precedent setting here already? Um, and so Massachusetts um, has yet to statutorily create a presumption the same as the federal government has. And there, there is legislation pending that would accomplish that. And I, I think if that does not happen, that um, I think MassCop's intention, and I, I assume with the help of the town, would be to file some sort of a special bill to uh, afford uh, the Sanji family that benefit. Sheila, if I could jump in for a second. Yeah, please. Um, I agree with everything Attorney Shapiro said, so I'm just going to add uh, a little bit there for those who may not be as familiar with the procedure. Is uh, yes, there is a federal presumption uh, regulation that the Justice Department uh, issued, like Attorney Shapiro said, uh, which we do believe uh, Detective Sanji does fall under. The Senate is supposed to take up the Massachusetts bill um, sometime in the beginning half of this week, with the House taking it either at the end of this week or early next week, um, with a favorable outlook in both chambers. Um, if that does not happen, we are allowed to do a home rule petition bill, um, similar to what we did with uh, Deputy Chief Williams for the Fire Department uh, at our last annual town meeting, where we would um, have a home rule petition to have the Commonwealth pay the state-issued benefits for um, line of duty death uh, for Detective Sanji. This is something that has been done many times before, not just with COVID, uh, but with many other cases throughout the Commonwealth. Um, and again, that's regardless of what our insurance covers. That's the state issued benefits that's there. Um, and this would be a home rule petition to have the state pay out those benefits because the town believes that this should be considered a line of duty death. I think to, to that point, through the chair, we have an opportunity right now, I mean, to get back to Jeff's question, to make a difference and help the family um, here with this, uh, you know, being put forward to us. We can talk about some of the other things in terms of what the state's going to do later, but um, I'm not sure if there's, is there anything, Mike, that will prevent us from moving forward on this tonight? Absolutely not. So I'll guess I'll make a motion. Um, we were looking for a motion to sign. A uh, motion to, um, through the chair, excuse me, I'm sorry about that, Sheila. Um, the motion would be to designate, um, excuse me one second, Nick, what was the date that he went no. April, 20, April 23rd. April 23rd. So designate uh, Detective John Sanji as injured on duty effective April 23rd and um, designated as line of duty death effective May 29th, 2020. Okay. I'll go ahead and make that motion um, as just for set by town administrator. Do I have a second? I'd like to second that, Jeff Stolings. Please. 
Is there any discussion? Um, either Mike or Attorney Shapiro, just for full transparency for the record, what is? Do we have a an amount of money in grand total? Because we're obviously making this motion with a, a couple of assumptions moving forward as far as what we can do legislatively. Attorney Shapiro, do you want to take that first? So, in I terms of okay, yeah, in terms of the uh, income tax. That we'd have to check that, Chief. Do you have anything you'd like to start with, and then I can pick up after that? Uh, regarding the, in, I'm not sure about the tax aspect of it. Um, I know that the, the federal death benefit is close to four hundred thousand. I am not sure right now on the state death benefit, but I know the um, the town's insurance company. I believe their death benefit is six twenty five. Yeah, six hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. Um, also importantly is the, um, the line of duty, the 111F designation would also assist uh, John's widow with um, collecting his retirement benefits. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Detective Sanji was only eight years into the system. Designating this allows him to be fully vested in the retirement system so his family can get the benefits. Which vesting might be, what, 10 years? Yeah. So... Um, just walking into this with full transparency, I think the assumption and the hope is that legislatively the right thing will be done here. It's a terrible position to be in to be the first, um, and that's where we are. Uh, first death due to COVID by a frontline non-medical person. Um, so here we are. So I think what you're hearing is we are um, approving this with the good chance uh, that we will see legislative relief from this. and. It if not, that the town is committing to cover those costs. Which is something town meeting has already passed as a um, local requirement for the town. It's the right thing to do. And Mike, just a clarification, was was this conversation had, I know that there was an officer in Boston as well. Did they go through a similar process? Yes. State right. police was one also. Yeah. All right. So I guess the motion's on the, the floor with a second. Move on the floor. Floor. Can I have a roll call, please? For a city, aye. Walker, aye. Stillings, aye. Whiteman, aye. So, aye. Unanimous. That passes. Thank you very much. Um, Chief, thank you for being here with us. Do we still have, uh, and yep, Officer Walker, thank you. Um, did you have anything you wanted to say, Dominic? Uh, I guess more so just thanking you guys for the support that you've shown the town, the amount of support that the town has shown has been really humbling through this entire thing. And just the entire state, you know, people from Boston have been reaching out to us, people from other agencies and um, different townspeople, just everyone just going through this whole process and knowing we have the support from everybody behind us is really, hasn't really changed how hard it's been, but it's really, it's helped us get through it and knowing that people are supporting us. So I just want to thank you guys. Well, thank you. Right. I'm glad we had enough to be able to take action on that tonight. All right. Uh, you are very welcome to stay with us, and you are very welcome to leave. Um, Attorney Shapiro, thank you for your Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your kind words also. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Dominic. Thank you, guys. All right, I'm going to do a second call. Is there anyone here for public comment? Uh, hearing none, Mike? None that I'm seeing. If you Again, if you're here for public comment, you can just wave in front of your camera. I believe we are up to your update then. All right. Uh, so for my first, just because it's been carrying over, our COVID-19 response update, uh, we will be working with... Um, the uh, fire chief, Seth Knight, and uh, Joe Buckley from the DPW to um, finish sanitizing our buildings and getting us ready for our reopening. Right now, our re uh, proposed reopening date for our public buildings is July 1st. If we can get everything done sooner, then we can certainly open sooner. However, that's our target date. Uh, a couple of the precautions that are being done to assist in opening our offices while at the same time uh, making sure that our staff members are kept safe is purchasing of uh, plastic shields over the countertops in the treasure collector's office 
and the town clerk's office. Uh, in the town hall annex, a uh, I call it a teller's window has been added to all of the doors uh, that are there. That way, um, people don't have to go into the offices themselves, but can remain in the hallway and still perform all the necessary transactions that need to be done there. And if someone has to go in, the doors are still doors. It's not like they don't uh, open still, so we can go there, but at least the precautions are still there. The kiosk for the viewpoint system is being um, will be sanitized regularly at that point, and we are um, looking at different ways to see if it's set up in the right spot, which we believe it is. And we, um, it was actually set up pretty well that uh, it doesn't take up too much space, and we can clean it with pretty good ease there. Uh, the library is also getting a plastic shield over the counter there. Um, all of our buildings had a deep clean this past week um, with a disinfectant on all hard surfaces and then all carpets were steam cleaned with the guidance that uh, the CDC has put out for um, fully preparing against uh, the virus there. Uh, I can say this is the first time that the community hall's carpets have been steam cleaned in forever, so they are the cleanest they've been in a very long time based on what we saw coming out of the carpets. Um, but um, all of our buildings are being sanitized and we are working very closely with um, health officials at the state and local level to make sure that when we do reopen not just us, but the public is also being kept safe there too. Um, and as those continue to go forward, we will update you along those lines. But again, as I said earlier, our target date is to have a reopening to the public by July 1st. Uh, all of the money that it, um, is being spent to do all these things, 75% of that is covered through FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management um, Administration and the other 25 coming from the CARES Act, which we received from the federal government. Uh, just an update that we have begun the water work in the Inward Road area. Um, the uh, equipment, we've received some questions about why there's heavy equipment at the Heights property. That is our storage area for the excavator and the pipes um, before it goes out into the, the Inward Road area. And I, we would like to say um, an explanation to the residents of that area of the town as well why there was a brief water, water shut off the other day prior to going out and excavating the road um, dig safe used our plans that we had in the DPW headquarters to mark the road on where to dig and where not to dig and that is how we found out our plans were incorrect um, when the uh, excavator went through the water main so the water was shut off for some time um, and we are in the process of correcting our plans to the correct location that it was in the road. Um, but that water should be back on there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about water when we get to the town meeting materials, just to give a further explanation about the um, treatment plant that I explained to the Finance Committee last week. But that work is ongoing, uh, and we've actually done a lot of progress on our sewer lines and the work that we've been doing with um, the DCR lines. Uh, we have found a lot of leaks in their lines. No big spot where it's a gush coming in, but it seems as though the joints in the pipes are what's leaking, and it's a steady leak through all those joints that are there. Uh, there is a section of um, about 7,000 linear feet of pipe that requires cleaning because our cameras are not able to go through because of the amount of debris that are in the pipes. So we are working with DCR to get those pipes cleaned to see if there is a massive break in that area as well, but we cannot get our pipes, our, our cameras through those pipes just because they're so clogged at those locations. Um, but finding the fact that we found these issues is a massive step forward for the town when it comes to um, moving our sewer system forward so we aren't in the financial straits that we were in in the past. And then the last thing I have in my update is just general updates. We do continue to work. Um, to get general government work done, even though we're in a time of pandemic. Um, that is here, we are continuing to work forward toward our town meeting. Uh, we did get a series of signs ready to go to help direct people. The town meeting crew is meeting next Monday to go over logistics um, and uh, eventually do a walkthrough of the Glenwood site. I can tell you that because uh, we are doing our drive-in town meeting, Sterling and Harvard are also uh, copying our plan actually. They asked for an emailed copy of the outline of everything and the instruction materials that we sent forward to both of your um, the boards that are here this evening um, and are copying that as well. 
Uh, where this comes into play with us is uh, Sterling and us were able to coordinate our purchase of the voting clickers. So they are on the same system and the same software. So if we are ever in a spot where we expect to have a larger than normal town meeting, we can actually share our clickers with each other. They will be marked Sterling and Rutland just to make sure that <laughs> we don't keep more than we have and uh, lose any that we have. But uh, it allows us to at least come up with a sustainability plan to use these moving forward. Uh, and if there are any other questions on things that are going on before I get to my last topic under general updates, um, please feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer them. All right, so my last thing I just wanted to bring about is just um, some traffic advisories for this week in town with the services for Detective Sanji. Uh, we've been notified that the calling hours will be at Miles Funeral Home in Holden from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday night. Um, we expect a long line, and the line will be uh, social distancing and masks will be required in the line as well. So it'll be a, very, a longer than usual already long line. So if you do plan to pay your respects that way, please plan ahead accordingly. Uh, the funeral service itself will be held on Thursday at 11 a.m. at St. Patrick's Church in Rutland next to the Community Hall building. Uh, please note that because of the current pandemic situation, only 40 people will be allowed in the church for the mass itself. With that said, the church will be reserved solely for family members and Rutland Police Department personnel. All others will be asked to stand outside on the common where there will be a loudspeaker projecting the mass out on onto the common. St. Patrick's Church will Facebook Live the interior of the Mass from inside the church uh, for residents to watch, and we will share that on the town's social media for those who wish to watch the services but not stand outside um, on the common as well. Um, so, And then following the services, there will be a procession over to the Public Safety Building where there will be a small service uh, before the hearse um, departs. So uh, from probably 9 a.m., till about 1 30 to 2 p.m. Um, please be cautious of driving through the downtown area avoid if you are not going towards the, to those services try to avoid the area if possible um, just because I expect people to get there early because they know how crowded this should be and um, if any of the visiting police departments or family members um, remain at the monument at the public safety building or things like that for a um, time afterwards just to make sure that we are giving the family their space and the privacy they deserve, but also their time to grieve during these times. So I just wanted to throw that advisory out there as well. And that is my update. Sheila, to the chair. Thanks. Yeah, go ahead. I um, just want to recognize the, uh, the tremendous job that our town administrator has done, Mike, and uh, chief of police during the the trying times and, uh, you know, through the, um, the public speaking and the news, the uh, impromptu uh, news service that was taken care of and uh, just uh, kudos to the leadership that we're seeing from our TA and, and police chief and fire chief during this this time so keep up the good work Mike thank you very much all right we're gonna move on we are on to department updates that is Anita Carlson welcome Anita one of these days we're gonna get you on video Anita, I will unmute you here one second. You are unmuted. Go ahead. One of these days. But I still like our channel 192. Uh, basically, for, for the uh, election updates, our new town clerk drop box is in place in front of Community Hall, thanks to the DPW for cementing it to the ground. Uh, people are using it, and it's available for any town clerk business. Uh, dropping off applications for early vote um, ballots and also return of ballots or, or anyone that's still doing dog licenses or, or any other requests we have. Um, early voting is, is uh, really strong. Uh, we've sent out, as of today, 180 uh, ballots and 90 have been returned so more than more than half so they're going out quickly and, and coming back the same way as for the polls we're just have you know we're, we're, we're still talking about 
floor plans and flow and separating, you know, people coming in and out. So we'll have all that worked out in plenty of time. And the only other thing that we're, we're planning on doing is, is using less staff than normal by you, by um, having the poll workers work longer hours. Cause sometimes the, a lot of times it was a, like a five, five hour shift that was, changing three times during the day. We just thought it was prudent to uh, eliminate so much turnover. But other than that, plans are moving along for the polls also. That's about it. Well, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Anita? The box looks great outside. Yeah, isn't that? We were, believe it or not, Damien and I kept saying, how can you be so excited about a drop box? But we were. <laughs> I think it's the little things these days that we're <laughs> excited about, little bits of good news. So um, if I may, it's Leah, if I may. Anita, does it, do you seem confident that you, that uh, election poll workers is not going to be an issue given um, if you're able to work with less staff and those that are working are um, willing to do the longer hours? Yes, I, I think so. We have, we have a really really large number of poll workers and and actually people love it so much that we also have a, a waiting list so I'm confident that that um, that we'll be able to staff without a problem we have a, a, a number of they're basically high school to actually starting their freshman year of college we have quite a few maybe five available also, so I don't think staffing will be an issue. I've reached out to some, so we're working, you know, in that in that direction. So I think we will be fine. We're just really fortunate in Rutland because I hear other town clerks have trouble keeping um, poll workers on a regular basis, but we've got a really, really wonderful crew. I was looking the other day for something that I was going to put in the town report and we have a considerable number of people who work, um, who have been on the list for well over 15 years. So we're That's fortunate. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, under old business, we, it, we are at the point where we can, uh, sign the election warrant, right, Anita? Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if I got it to Mike in time it's in, so that you could take a look. In our yeah, if you uh, refresh your folders, it is in there for you to see. <laughs> the hard copy is, is uh, next to, to Mike's office door, so I left it there for signatures. It doesn't have to be posted till next Monday, so whenever if you vote it tonight, approve it, then there's no rush to get in to sign it. Let's get it done. All right, I got a motion. Uh, motion to sign, or, or can we designate the uh, the chair to sign the uh, special and annual? This has to be board signature. This is all I, I would prefer, to per, prefer board signatures, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. We'd only need to be three of you. And, it, and like I said, it doesn't have to be done. You'd have a whole week to do it, so. This is one I'm actually not even legally allowed to be authorized to sign because I'm not the elected official for the town. Okay. Uh, to full board signature. All right. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, roll call, please. Still anxiety. Walker, I. Wait, I. Mitch, I think yours got. Did you did you get that? Uh, Aye. Thank, thank you. Did by uh, unanimous. Thank you very much, Anita. Thank you. Um, do, are you staying for anything else since we going out of order? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to listen. But I would just like to uh, make one other point that the annual town meeting warrant, because they've been separated, it needs to be posted by the 12th, which is uh, the fri uh, Friday. And if at all possible. Well, I think it would be really helpful. I know you're placing articles tonight. If if you could manage to sign it prior to June 8th, it would be helpful for Constable Saul that if he could post both at the same time. But if but if that doesn't work out, that, that's okay too. So. All right. Another. 
other than that, I'm good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's a, an accomplishment goal, I guess, for the evening. So, um, <laughs> moving on under our agenda, we now have the big ticket item, I suppose, for the evening. Setting, uh, warrant articles as available as possible tonight. That is under um, number 10, old business for 110. Special and annual town meeting warrant requests, as we know. Again, Mike, I'm going to let you talk in a second. Uh, this is one meeting, not two. All of the uh, warrant articles are going on to one meeting agenda. Mike. I just wanted to point out that we have our town planner, Dave George, joining us tonight to talk about a uh, warrant article that he submitted as well. Um, I know if we wanted to kind of get that out of the way first before we get in, into it, because it's for, towards the end of the agenda of the warrant itself. Okay. Um, all right. If everyone could pull out their town meeting materials folder, if you have not already. Um, as you can see, some of the articles are numbered, um, and it is at the board's pleasure. We can start with Article 1, or we can start uh, with the first one that at least is on my list, which is agriculturalism. Uh, I believe why Planner George is here. Uh, yeah, I, Sheila, uh, if Dave's here, I would go ahead and all right. we move that. All right. We are opening the agritourism bylaw. Um, you've got a presentation there uh, in PowerPoint as well as the text uh, of the agricultural accessory use bylaw. Um, Dave, do you? Uh, well, how about if we give you the floor uh, and you can give us a, a, an overview of what you've got? And I think you are muted. I know you're on a couple of devices. Dave, you should be unmuted now. Why don't you try that? Yes, yes, I, I am. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I, as Mike indicated, I did submit a PowerPoint presentation. Mike, would you like for me to speak to that? Sure, I can pull it up for you, too, if you'd like. If you don't mind, that would be great. I'll try to be brief, as brief as possible. <laughs> So do I have access to this, Mike? Uh, just let me know when you'd like to advance. OK, great. Thank you. So good evening, Select Board of FinCom. I appreciate the opportunity tonight to make this uh, presentation on, on, on something which I think is an important zoning bylaw proposal that should have a positive effect on the town. If you could advance the slide, please. Oh, my apologies, Dave, there. I hit the wrong button. So agritourism, and what is it? Uh, generally speaking, it is an activity that brings folks into town to visit a local farm enterprise. Ideally, visitors will stay and purchase goods and wares from the local farm enterprise. Next, please. And, and this uh, bylaw applies to agriculture in all of its branches. Next, please. So agritourism, agritourism, and you know the reason why we think this should be encouraged in town is because because it does it does well in areas like Worcester County, which have several several larger urban areas to draw customers from. Uh, and just as an incidental, Worcester County has the largest number of farmers in Massachusetts. You know, as as based on the county county numbers. Uh, next, please. So agritourism revenue has been strong in Worcester County, which is consistent with, with some of the national trends. According to the 2017 Census of Agriculture, agritourism revenue has increased from $5.4 million in 2012 to $8.9 million in 2017 in Worcester County. Agritourism revenue represents a small portion of total farm revenue, so therefore we would expect further increases in agritourism revenue as a separate classification. Next, please. So in the town, there are currently several farm enterprises which occupy over 1,000 acres of land. And th these enterprises engage in a wide range of activities and offer a wide range of products. Next, please. As you can see on the base map, there are several areas that are either under agricultural preservation restriction or land that is in the Chapter 61 and 68 program. Those are areas that are, show up in the green here. and all also in the orange and the gray, as noted on the key. 
Uh, next, please. So the idea of agritourism, it goes back a ways, actually. Uh, it goes back probably about a year and a half ago with the uh, zoning bylaw drafted in February of the current year. Uh, it starts off with conversations with some of the local farm, uh, farm enterprises regarding the feasibility of farmer's market and farm tours, et cetera. And then it leads to further research into the town master plan, rural 11 plan, some other important planning documents. Next, please. So as just, as just mentioned, the bylaw was drafted in 2020 originally in February. Uh, subsequently, it was approved by the Agricultural Commission on May 19th, 2020, as, you know, as, as a concept to further pursue. Now, I will note, and I don't like to make excuses, but the COVID pandemic did adjust the schedule slightly. Um, a meeting or two needed to be canceled, but while that was happening, we continued to work on this project in a diligent fashion. Next, please. So the purpose of the bylaw, consistent with the right to farm bylaw and several other planning documents, the bylaw promotes open space preservation and opportunities for farmers to diversify, uh, to diversify a lot of their revenue streams. Next, please. So the bylaw lists for the first time allowable accessory uses and new uses that may be considered accessory. Next, please. So, uh, and if the use is considered to be accessory by right, then all that's required is just registration with the building commissioner, the AGCOM, and the planning office. Uh, if the use needs site plan review, then a permit from the planning board would be required. Also, in addition to the, in addition to a review by the building commissioner and, my, and the planning office and AGCOM, if the use has an agricultural preservation restriction attached to it, there may be review necessary from MDAR. Next, please. So the, the bylaw has been publicized on the town's Facebook page and website. The Planning Board Bylaw Subcommittee has taken a look at the draft and has recommended it to the full planning board for a hearing on June 17. Uh, in addition, the public comment period is ongoing. Next, please. So for more information on this uh, bylaw, I mean, please check out the uh, planning board website under the proposed agri-tourism bylaw tab or provide comments to the planning office. Next, please. Uh, now, in summary, the proposal is expansive. This is not a restrictive bylaw by any means. The bylaw pr proposal promotes open space preservation, promotes diverse revenue streams for farm enterprises, and allows the town to market itself as an agri-tourism destination. So tonight, it would be appreciated if the select board could place this item on the warrant in the most favorable spot possible as early as this meeting. And it would be also appreciated if the select board and FinCon could both go on record in support of this proposal as soon as possible. I appreciate everybody's time. There's a couple more slides that have references as well. If we could just show those to the board, please. Absolutely. One second. Thank you, Mike. And the next, please. And then if there's any questions or comments, we'd be glad to answer them at this point. Thank you. Sheila, Mitch has his hand up. Go ahead, Mitch. Uh, my button disappeared to raise my hand, so I just did it. <laughs> uh, so through the chair, uh, <clears throat> first, uh, I, I asked some questions last week during the bylaw subcommittee. Um, hearing so Dave I appreciate your continued time um, I know you've been tasked with putting together quite a few difficult projects since you've been onboarded um, so I don't want it to feel like we're picking on you because we're not uh, but um, this is a uh, something I have a few questions on so um, <clears throat> you're talking about two different things I think in this bio you're talking about 61a and APR um, I know 61 1A has certain contingencies related to accessory uses or, or different uses on the property. Um, can you be specific as to uh, and clarify what what this bylaw allows that's currently not allowed the way that we're currently structured, if anything? Well, it's, it's actually, pardon me, it's actually quite a bit. Currently, the zoning bylaw does not get into great detail in terms of accessory uses. A lot of this is based upon interpretation of the Zoning Act. 
there are uses listed in town for farm stands and farm structures and the like. This bylaw is more explicit and it lists out accessory uses for the first time, which are believed to be incidental and customary, such as corn mazes and educational uh, demonstrative tours, hay rides, etc. And in addition to that, it also brings in to play certain uses which have over time been occurring on agricultural properties such as weddings, receptions, private parties, concerts, festivals, etc. So that brings those uses into play for the first time as accessory if there's a site plan granted. So I guess my, my question and my concern, um, and maybe you can address some of this, uh, and again, thank you, you've obviously worked hard on putting this together. The, when you have, 61A has a lot of protections in terms of uses and a certification process that the state goes through um, to ensure that the 61A is not necessarily being abused. Um, the APR use, you know, is there, does this open up a situation where, for example, on uh, an APR restricted lot, um, you could have an accessory use where that accessory use is perhaps bringing in a good deal of commercial enterprise uh, um, how is that going to be taxed? Are we are we taxing that as a commercial to help offset those residential rates, or is that just going to be um, is that the accessory going to be treated differently than any other business um, opening in a, in a commercial sense? Well, first and foremost, it should be should be plainly understood that this is a zoning bylaw that pertains to uses. Yeah. So the tax implication was really beyond the scope of this project. I do think that, uh, I do believe one of our guests is here who has knowledge of the APR program. I'm not sure if that's in your, your wheelhouse. Hi, this is Delia DeLongchamp. I work as the stewardship planner for Eastern Massachusetts for the APR program with the Department of Ag Resources. Uh, I kind of pirated onto your call a few minutes in here. So hello, welcome. Thanks for having me here. Uh, as far as the tax questions, we usually always refer 61A questions on taxation, valuation, especially, you know, to town particulars, uh, to Department of Revenue. We don't oversee that program at the Department of Ag. Um, so uh, you might want to... Um, I'm not talking about 61A. Right. But as for, like, whether, you know, APR doesn't change the taxation for those accessory uses, um, whether under this proposal or otherwise. We don't... Um, Department of Ag does not oversee... Um, that consideration for classification for tax purposes for municipalities. So like your question was, do some of these accessory uses then change their, their, their taxable rate? Um, well, I just, you know, I envision a scenario. I just wanted to make sure that if we have a commercial enterprise setting up on a property with a specific tax structure that we as a municipality are able to collect a commercial tax rate to offset our residential tax liability. I mean, it would just seem unfair to the other businesses trying to develop in town um, that don't have similar protections. Uh, I know the bylaw doesn't address that, Dave, but I think it's, a, it's certainly a serious implication that we need to have a discussion about. So uh, do any members of the FinCom have questions? I believe this came up in one of your meetings as well. This is the time to discuss it. And I think what I would put out there is this. We've had many discussions among us about keeping this meeting um, as simple as possible for the residents who are going to take the time to come to our, our drive-in movie um, of a meeting. And I think the question before us with this is, is there a time sensitivity to this knowing that we are um, losing businesses. Uh, we saw an announcement just the other day about a business that's that's shuttering. Um, and you know, are there farms as well as businesses that are struggling? Um, and is this something where if we are looking to try to pull ourselves out of what looks like a, a looming recession, um, is this a place to do it uh, in terms of saving saving some of the farm? So I, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I think before us is, do we put this on this warrant? Do we put this on this town meeting? Well, I mean, I think to that point, Sheila, 
we haven't really heard from anybody yet. I mean, the public hearing on this isn't until three weeks from now. Um, I just feel like, and I understand the process, Dave's process was hindered by this whole COVID thing. Um, and Dave, this is not reflective of your work, but I feel like we, we time and time again get into a situation where these different bylaws and things are rushed to the point where we're going, we, we haven't heard from AG, we haven't heard from FinCon, we haven't heard from Planning Board. Um, it just, it seems a little bit rushed and we have to place this tonight. Uh, we haven't even had the conversation about how this is going to impact the town fiscally yet. Um, we haven't had a lot of time to go through this. The public hasn't had the opportunity to input questions uh, in terms of the full scope and scale of, of the process. Um, it just seems like this is a little bit premature um, if we want to stick with the process that, that we have laid out in terms of the right way to do things. Well, if I could, I'm, I'm you know, I think that we have worked on this for more than, than just a little bit of time here. Um, we do have some comments. We do have an open comment period. We're not looking to get comments from the public. We've tried to do the outreach on Facebook and the website, et cetera. We have done the outreach to the Agricultural Commission and had several meetings and interviews with the members separate with the members of that group. I also have a letter of support uh, from Dill Perkins and Mesa Farm, who is in support of this, this proposal. Um, certainly the fall would be a non-starter at this point given the task predilection to handle zoning. I think the benefits of doing this now is that it allows the farm enterprise community to engage in its permitting process over the summer to help them set the table for the fall. And I would hope that by fall we're well out of the pandemic crisis and that the enterprises that we're trying to encourage here would be happening in abundance in the fall in town here and also that would set the table for activities to happen next spring. I mean, to that point, Dave, there are tax implications with the bylaw that the bylaw doesn't address that we really need to look at what the impact is going to be before just moving forward on something. I mean, that would be my view. Um, again, I like the intent of this. Uh, you've worked hard on it. I think it would the the intent and the, the structure would really be a boon to the community, but I, I really just think we need to take a look at the fiscal impact before we move forward. Well, in terms of the fiscal impact, this is not commercial uses per se. These are accessible, ex I'm sorry, accessory to by right agricultural uses. As we know, agricultural uses enjoy broad protections under the, the Zoning Act. So these are not commercial uses per se. This is not like a Dunkin' Donuts extension on, on Main Street here or a manufacturer or a biomedical facility or something like that. These are uses that are related directly to agriculture, which is a principal permitted use. Okay, so hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to go in order, Dave, because we have a lot of hands up. So Karen had her hand up, and uh, then I'll go back to you, and then I'm going to go to Jeff. So, uh, Dave, my question is, is the convening authority for holding up this would be the building inspector. The building inspector is already quite busy with all of the building that is done in town, so I'm curious how we're going to expect him to do more with less and less and less. Uh, I'm not sure of that. I mean, right now, if there's a use that goes in, say, for example, a farm enterprise would like to put up a restaurant, the restaurant would need the annual inspection in the same way that existing restaurants need the annual inspection today. I don't know that we're going to be expecting a great increase of new structures that tie to this proposal such that it would strain the resources of the building department. I did speak to the building commissioner about this. And he's not uncomfortable with with having entities submit to him um, a letter indicating what they would like to do under a proposed basis. So I'm going to go to Jeff, and then I think I saw Kevin Jarvie. Okay, so let's go Jeff, and then back back to Dave to answer a question if need be, and then on to Mr. Jarvie. Thank you, Sheila. So I I, I don't support delaying this anymore. I, th I think it has been. Uh, worked on it. It's not something that Dave started last week. He's worked on it. We have our meetings six months apart anyways. So, uh, I mean, within that last period between the last meeting and, and, and this one, he had been working on this. Uh, there is a hearing coming up at, uh, in a couple of weeks on the matter. The agriculture, according to Dave's PowerPoint, the Ag Commission 
has been presented to and briefed on it, and he, they did sign off on it. And as far as time sensitivity, uh, um, I concur with what Dave George just said about, you know, if you delay it to the fall, it's going to preclude a lot of the farms who uh, are struggling. We, we have to acknowledge that they're struggling. Um, it's going to uh, hinder them the opportunity to stay afloat, especially during these times. And I'm not seeing the commercial aspect for it. So if we give uh, uh, the Alta Vista farm in there, it's not like they're going to go plow up in a Walmart or a Target or something like that. They're looking to be a little bit creative. And I like the term that Dave used, the uh, the enterprise in there, to allow uh, its legitimate farm use to do the corn maze, uh, to be able to do uh, a concert or the food truck uh, with the, uh, the the brewing of uh, what they get going Jeff, on and things to like that. that point, though, so I fully I support, just one second. So I, I fully support that. I think it's reasonable. It's been placed. We do have a town planner who's a full-time town planner and that's uh, you know that's his job, and he does his job well. And I think uh, we're not we're not approving it. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on the people's meeting for the people to discuss. If they have concerns, you can voice the same concerns on why it's such a bad idea. Uh, but the people are the ones that ultimately have the the right and the responsibility to uh, decide. The process was there. We have a full-time town planner who's done his job. He's done his job well. He's, he's presented this uh, like like his job is expected to do, and it's our job to place it on the war. And that's really that's all uh, is up to us to place it to let the people decide. And I and I think he's met his obligation. All right, hold on. So uh, I am not in favor of delaying it. I'm going to update Mitch. We're going to come back to you, but I'm going to go Kevin, and then I saw Ian's hand up, and then back to Mitch. Thank you, Sheila. Kevin Jarvey, uh, Alta Vista Farm over on Hillside Road. I just wanted to. Um, touched uh, um, a couple of comments as far as it was. I think I think uh, David George was in the office for a week when he was hired, and it, well, maybe not even that. And I asked him about this. So we have been working on it for a couple of years now, and it is at the point where over a year ago I got a, a letter of approval from uh, DCR to utilize some property that we have um, for items like just what we're talking about: walking trails, archery. So we've gotten that well over a year ago, and they've given us the permission to do that on, on a piece of property that one is that we're talking about specifically right now to be able to do something. Otherwise, six months, a year from now, and, and we, we could have 10 houses in there. I'm, I, I am personally right now at this moment struggling to try to save this piece of property from becoming houses. This helps all of that. And I know maybe it's not perfect today, but I believe that our planning board, I believe that our building inspectors, I believe FinCom, all the other boards can handle it moving forward to make sure that nobody takes advantage of it. Um, and that, that's one thing I wanted to say on the personal side. If I can switch over to the, um, I'm Kevin Jarvey, chairman of the Board of Assessors here in the town of Rutland, and 61A puts in qualifications and classifications on land use, what they can and can't do. Um, it's either agricultural or 61B is over to recreational, but it does remove the need for commercial taxation on those properties. But it does not include it if there was a building and that building became a retail outlet, that building would be then excluded and would need to be taxed properly. So if it's uses that aren't detrimental or changing the land use year to year, it's my interpretation and my understanding that it would not change and it should not be taxed under uh, commercial applications if that answers any of the questions or if that, and it's all, there's a lot of case by case, uh, Mitch, just so you know, there's so many variations here. You could say, what if you do an A, B, C, or D? That could take years and years and years to, to weed them my all question, out. I think it's my question, to Kevin. To my yeah. first question to Kevin, because Kevin, Sheila, I know, but he just uh, addressed me. Is is that if you, for example, were to open under accessory use a restaurant, I mean, you've already opened a brewery, are you paying the same taxes on that as lads would, would be in operating? Or if they were to, uh, if we had a brewery come in that operated in a commercial space? So, so before Kevin answers that. Because I don't know if he knows the answer, I mean, and I, I don't want to put him on the spot as a as a, a professional. Kevin, did you want to answer that, or because we've got other people? I, I, anybody else can. I mean, it's 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 
for me to answer the question, am I being taxed the exact same as the uh, brewery down in Worcester? I'm going to say no, probably. No, no, I mean here in town. Are you being taxed uh, as a commercial entity with that accessory use? Right, but I'm not a I'm not a restaurant like Lads. We're, I mean, it's all case by case. I mean, what what I have is a farm brewer's license, so I'm not allowed to do everything Lads is allowed to do. If I was allowed to do everything Lads is allowed to do, then I, maybe I you know. So it's not we're we're not the same. Okay, so so let's stop this because I I do want to get back to the the list here because I had Ian and then I've I've lost somebody. Leah has her hand up and then Jeff, but just uh, Mitch. So I don't know about you, I. I I'm hoping everybody is looking at the list on page three of the four pages of the bylaw. I think the difference with his restaurant, if he were to open a restaurant or, or if Jordan's did, is that the, a significant portion of the products sold in the restaurant would have to be pre prepared with farm crops grown or raised on site. That is my reading right now of the allowable accessory uses. So anyway, okay, uh, Ian, ready? I'm going to come back to you. All right, I'm going to come back to Ian. Leah? Sorry, I just was going to say, I think allowing farms to diversify a little bit could potentially bring more people into town to spend money in other businesses in town. Think of if they're coming in for a corn maze, let's say, and want to grab sandwiches at the marketplace, or go to dumps for a coffee or head to baked for a breakfast. I think that the opportunity is not just, could be beneficial to the town, the, the small businesses already in town. Okay. Ian, you ready? Yeah, I just have, you know, there's a lot of concerns about uh, the different activities that, that are going to be going on and to get the other boards really to sit and talk about that. I think we're early because we haven't had, the uh, the real meeting we're, we're two weeks away from that meeting and just just a lot of let them meet and planning board and give us some ideas here because i get what everybody's trying to do we got colvin so that's another issue at this point so how many people are we going to have to watch what these activities are i i know it's it, it kind of stinks but that's another question so jeff just a quick point on, you know, why are we hung up on the discussion of how they're going to be taxed when that's uh, down the road? All you have to do is check with the countless other agritourism farms in our area that do the joint agriculture and special events. Find out how they are taxed. There's a lot, I'm sure, attached to it, and there's the answer. So I, I going back to what is before us is the placing of this uh, on the the warrant, and I uh, just uh, reiterate what I said before. That's our job tonight: is to uh, decide whether to place it on there. It's been presented; it's ready; it's ready. Uh, reasonable. It's time to do it, and, I, and I'm ready to make the motion. Please. Jeff, that, Jeff Please. it's not ready because you you still haven't had your meeting that's due on the 17th. So I, I'm I apologize, but I jumped in there. You, you haven't had this meeting. We're I understand well, because of COVID, we're behind. Hold on. Let's clarify. Dave, you, I want you to clarify something, a couple things for us. First of all, the meeting on the 17th is the hearing, yes? It's Public hearing. Okay. That's not our meeting, Ian. So right. you're, to your oh, I, I agree, but that's what I'm saying is it's the public hearing. It's the public hearing to comment on the content. However, so how, wait, how, wait, can, just, how can we just, vote to agree? Because for as a matter of process, just because of timelines and how early generally we are setting these warrants, we have, have had multiple situations in the past where a public hearing was coming up after the fact of, of, the, of the warrant being set. I'm not saying that's ideal. I'm just saying there's precedent there. We've done it. Dave, could you speak, please? Because unfortunately, you know, you're here speaking as our planner, and I can't have you speak for the planning board, but could you give us a sense of you know, to the questions that are coming up. We don't have a planning board member here tonight in attendance. Uh, can you can you tell us what they're, where they are right now? Uh, yes, I've asked Norm. I, I mean, I, I let the planning board know about this meeting tonight, I, but no one's there, so that's okay. Um, the planning board bylaw subcommittee consists of all the planning board members and Bonnie Bessie. The planning board bylaw subcommittee when they reviewed this, looked at the bylaw itself and went line by line. There were no 
major recommended changes to the language. Um, without putting the, the planning board on the spot, since they're not here, that wouldn't be a good thing to do. I'm not getting a sense that there's major issues that they have on it at this point. I can't speak for all the members. You may have a four to one sense that this is a good thing for the town. It advances agriculture. It encourages tourism in town, so forth and so on. But I can't really definitively speak on their behalf at this time. However, I will say one thing. The planning board is going to have them in their next meeting on the 9th of, of June. And while that's not the information session slash public hearing, this item will be on the agenda. And to the extent that uh, people would like to provide comments, not, ha not necessarily having the back back and forth because that's not the hearing, but to offer comments, I think that would help the board get a sense of which direction they'd like to go in. Sheila, I just want to point out we have a planning board member who has joined our meeting. I, I see that. Um, is the planning board member ready to speak? It, to Dave's point um, to the board, I just want to say that uh, the last meeting we had with our bylaw subcommittee um, was, was voted on um, to send it to the planning board for review and, and uh, basically any comments. And then uh, um, we'd also at the same time planned uh, through Dave a public hearing. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's a special meeting on the 17th. And like Dave said, on the 9th, we're going to have discussions. But uh, we, the bylaw subcommittee, he basically at the time had Bonnie Bessie and maybe it's already been said and all the planning board members so we basically had discussed it among ourselves as a bylaw subcommittee and then uh, uh, forward it to the planning board so it's uh, I don't want to speak for any board members but from my perspective we're just going to go over it one more time and then uh, have a public hearing and then vote on it so you you can see though Tim where people are concerned about sort of cart and horse right in it. Yeah, but and, and Mike could uh, maybe uh, help me out, but if I'm not mistaken, we have up until the banging of the gavel before um, uh, the, if you want to call it the uh, article or the bylaw for the article, it can still be modified if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so similar to how we can amend a motion Correct. up until the banging of the gavel, uh, because the warrant ar article itself says per the handout in the town clerk's office that handout can also be amended just like a motion can also be amended up until the banging of the gavel um, so long as the handout that, that is referenced contains the same heading and title of it and just demarks at the bottom of the page where the edits were made since its original version and when those edits were made um. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. We do have a couple of, I think, AGCOM members here, and I'm just wondering if they, they would like to speak to this. I don't think they're here for that necessarily, but no? OK. Um, you know, I, I'm back to there's a couple of you know differing opinions. I don't know that this is a slam dunk in either direction. The question is, I think, to Jeff's point, placing it on this warrant for this meeting and whether it's appropriate it's you know that the what we're weighing for me and I, I understand what Mitch is saying he has fiscal concerns I, I don't I will say Mitch, I don't see that there's a I don't see that there is a risk fiscally in it being bad just that it might not be as good as we would like it I think that's where you're kind of headed like that, you know right that the town the town would be helping um, a farm but not necessarily seeing a financial benefit from well, it. it wouldn't put us no in that's not really issue to put it like that is not really my concern and I think to say that there's different opinions I think it's it's wrong too I mean everybody's in support of I think the general purpose of this and helping those farms I just I wish that we had more input and time to look at it I mean, we have FinCom that hasn't looked at it and reviewed it and had those fiscal conversations. I just want to know going in, the placing it, and how much, uh, as much information as we possibly have, because to Jeff's point, it is our duty to place items when they're presented right. We have a process that we have to put bylaw uh, changes and different bylaws on the warrant. We haven't met that process yet. 
We're cutting it down to the wire. We don't have as much information as we would like. If the thing could be better and could be modified to be more helpful in some way, I want to know that prior to us putting it on the warrant and having the town vote on it. And we haven't gone through that process yet. What's so bad about it? Jeff, I didn't say anything was bad about it. I just want information from our boards and committees that we task with taking a look at this in an objective manner. Haven't heard from planning board. Haven't heard from FinCom. Haven't heard from Ag. You so, know? So um, Tim just had his hand up. And Tim, could you speak to that? Because I think my my response from a non-planning board perspective is this actually has been pretty consistently our process. Just relevant. because we've done something wrong for 30 years, Sheila, doesn't mean we continue no, to No, I'll it. give you that. I agree. I, I hate that sort of, this is how we've always done it. Um, I'm just saying that there's precedent oh. in our timeline here, but I think Tim could speak to that better. Actually, and this is more of a, a process, um, the, in the last four or five years, and don't quote me on the time frame, using the bylaws subcommittee as actually the uh, uh, going through and doing the due diligence is something that's uh, been an advantage to the planning board and I think from zoning bylaws benefit to the town. So, and it was thoroughly vetted for four hours of, of line by line of that bylaw and we discussed everything that had been brought up. And again, before it came to the bylaw subcommittee, and of course they'd been discussing it previous to that, We'd already vet, it'd been vetted through our attorney, so that gave us a little bit of a, uh, I guess, a warm, fuzzy feeling that uh, a lot of the legalities, which we always are worried about on a bylaw, has been vetted through our legal, uh, with our legal counsel. So that's why at the end of the bylaw subcommittee, it was a, a motion was put on the floor and seconded and voted on to send it to the planning board with uh, the comments that we'd made. So, so we have a recommendation that we could look at then from from the subcommittee tonight, Tim? Um, Dave, I'm going to have to ask. We had markups that we'd sent that was coming, that was going to be as part of the presentation. Um, I don't, I personally don't have the minutes of the meeting. Right. The minutes have not been drafted as of yet. Uh, um, however, there were no major issues that the planning board bylaw subcommittee was looking to see addressed. So I guess, Mitch, to answer your question, we had wording changes, but the majority of the bylaw um, was left in place because it was, uh, as far as we concerned, it was um, the word I'm looking for, for uh, uh, advantageous to the uh, um, zone, to the town for the zone for the zoning bylaw. So um, I'm not, I, I don't know how much farther to go from that, other than. Uh, there weren't a lot of changes that we were going to recommend to the planning board. I mean, in terms of the actual, if I could just cut in, sorry, Tim. Oh, go ahead, Dave. In terms of the recommendation, the recommendation would come from the planning board to the town meeting um, based after it has its hearing. And as we look to get more comments from people, you know, comment period has been open for a couple of weeks. I have a, do have comments, as I indicated earlier, from Dill Perkins, where he's, he's in plain support of this proposal. I have not received any other comments in writing that I could pass on to the board at this point. And, and I think to, to jump off Dave's comment, that was one of the recommendations of the planning board to Dave. And, and I personally had spoken with Mike about this. Of We've got a couple large farmers in town. Let's get their input to make sure there's nothing we're missing. So when this does come to the, to the planning board on the 17th, uh, uh, we've got everything. We've got all of our ducks in a row. Now, like I said, the, we, we don't have the public's input, so um, I don't want to negate any of that because the public could actually add something during that uh, phase that would need to be changed or added or subtracted. Okay. Thank you. Is okay. Anybody, otherwise, I'm going to – that was just I heard the planning board's requirements, so I jumped in. If I'm – that's if there's no other questions. Well, But one thing I do want to add, Mitch, we did talk about the financial side of it. And because of the prepared food and the meals tax, we felt that there were some revenue coming into town. Because any prepared food, there's a, I don't remember the number, quarter percent or something like that, of uh, financials coming into the town. So that was discussed during the uh, bylaw subcommittee about what revenue would be generated from this. And then and the other standpoint was, you know, it, it, it's a, to the point of being an agro-tourism, we get people into town. So... 
there's benefit from that from a financial standpoint too. So that was all discussed during our planning board subcommittee meeting. Any other questions? And I'll take off. You could get your own screen, Tim. You can join us. Uh, I'm, I'm, wor I'm working on my interview screen right now for my interview this week. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, Does come out. Karen's kick me out. Is there any more input? I do have a question. Yes. So we have the public comment. We've now. Oh, we're going to post this uh, bylaw out for everyone to see, and then we have public comment. So people might read it and say, okay, I'm, I'm pleased with that. There's no reason to worry about it. Then it gets changed the night of the meeting. The handouts will be there for those who come, but the fact is at that point, we haven't let all the townspeople see it. Um, I, you know, again, I'm back to that is – Without exception, the process, even in the best case scenario, Karen, that the, the public hearings might initiate some changes, and it is the people on the town meeting floor who will be reading what is presented to them and voting on it that evening live. I, mean, I think that I think you do hit the nail on the head relative to yeah, you, you got to be at the meeting. You can't you can't you know accept it as to form, not show up and think it's going to pass or think it's think it's going to look exactly because to the, Point, even if it looked exactly to the letter like it does in front of us tonight, somebody could make a motion to change some of the phrasing from the floor. So, I, you know, I don't think we would know until the pe people took action on it. But I see where you're headed. Actually, I think that happened. Sheila, at the last meeting, we had a couple of things. We had a change oh, yeah. on the floor that went through. Yeah, absolutely. It's happened multiple times. I think with marijuana, it happened as well. Um, uh, several others. Norm could speak to these so much better. We should. Somebody should go drag him onto a screen somewhere. So here's what we could do right now. Again, I'm still back to, is there time sensitivity? Uh, and, you know, again, having, having really committed to trying to make this a very straightforward meeting, is this so time sensitive that we're going to set that goal aside? Because this is, without a doubt, going to make this a longer meeting. Look at the discussion we're having tonight and how long this has taken. You know, people will have legitimate questions about whatever this looks like when it comes onto the floor or the stage or wherever we're doing. Um, so if you want for right now, we can put a pin in it and move on and try to place some articles and, and, and circle back. Carol. Wait, Carol. Carol. Muted, Carol. Muted. Muted. There we go. Um, if it doesn't go on now, what is the lapse of time? Would it come back up in the fall meeting? Or if we talk in a whole year? I mean, this is, we're in a desperate situation more so than most years. So time, time is of the essence. We don't want to lose any farm people, any land, any jobs, etc. So, So, Leah, hold on one second. I'll answer that. So in a normal year, I would say almost every fall, right, somewhere between October and November, it's been as late as December, there has been a special town meeting. Will that happen this year if we see a second wave? I don't know. Will there be a financial catastrophe that will force us to have a second town meeting in order to address budget shortfalls because of state actions? Maybe. Maybe it will wait as late as January. We also have certain people in the community, and, and is, they're well within their right. We are are a town that has one annual town meeting. Some towns phrase it differently. Some towns will have two meetings a year that are considered official. We don't. We have one. And there are some people who say bylaw questions should come up at the annual. Always the annual, not the special. And that that's kind of a cyclical conversation, right? We have that conversation every fall. Leah. I kind of, um, to feed a little bit off of what Karen just said, I kind of would like to see a place this year. I feel like with this spring and COVID, more and more people have been outdoors and coming to Rutland to be outdoors, and, and I would like to give the the farms the opportunity to continue to feed on that energy of people being outdoor, coming to Rutland for outdoor activities, and give them the opportunity to keep feeding on that rather than wait six months or a year and see if they can be sustainable for that. T the farms can be sustainable for that time as well as, who knows, people may not decide they want to be in Rutland anymore. They're coming out here to go to the prison camps, to go to the state park. They're in town a lot. 
Um, Delia, did you have your hand up? I apologize. I did, and I might have to hop off soon um, just because the littles are like squawking back there. But I just wanted to say that I really appreciate this discussion because, you know, this, we at the state have been grappling with our what we call a special permit process to assess non ag activities, of which some of these things fall under. I think that this initial, whether you call it a draft or, you know, whatever gets presented to your warrant is very thoughtful. And we have really struggled even at the state level to get this much definition, especially under. Um, uh, sec, you know, section uh, 5D. And I think I have some additional comments I can share with David offline. Um, would love to connect with you again. Um, but I think it's it's very valuable. And the conversation about missing the window is something that at the state level, we're spending a lot of time talking about uh, in regards to the previous person. I think her name was Leah mentioning, you know, the fall is a pretty critical time for a lot of our farms. Um, and because people, these are, a lot of these activities are things that will be allowable under the various phases. And um, so it, it, it does seem like it's timely. We've, again, struggled for several years evolving our own process on this. But I thought that this was a pretty good shot at uh, the logistical process and what gets defined underneath as accessory and allowable by right. And um, I really liked the format of it. So I appreciate you letting me kind of listen in on this conversation. I think Rutland is such a focal point for the APR program with so many farms in town. I think there's um, 18, maybe APRs out of 950 across the state. So it's a it's a big focal point. We know many of those farmers very well intimately. And um, we, we hope that, you know, this sounds like it could provide some relief and a real great direction and really put Rutland on the map as far as being uh, very thoughtful in the, the treatment for a farm uh, zoning. So good work on getting it this far. Thanks, Delia. Thank um, you, guys. All right. So our choices are vote on the placement or circle back. Obviously, we've got some less contentious ones as well. Anyone? Jeff? Let's vote on the placement. If you don't like it, vote no. All right. So what you need to do then is uh, head over to your... Is it Article 22? Articles, yep. Is that the latest version, Article 22, Planning Board? So the best thing to do at this point would be to go to your warrant, actually. And right now it is placed, uh, yeah, last. Oh, no. But, yeah, pretty much last as Article 22. Yep. So I make the motion, Stillings makes the motion to place Article 22 uh, as presented on the draft warrant um, to see if the town will vote to amend the town's zoning bylaw by inserting a section entitled Agricultural Accessory Use. Motion to place. Thank you. Do I have a second? Walker, second. Any more discussion? Roll call. All in favor? Billings, aye. Walker, aye. aye. Whiteman, aye. City, aye. Dubai. All right, unanimous. Thank you. We are going back to the top. Um, so again, in your folders, the individual articles are your backup information. If you go to your warrant, that's the placement. And we are placing warrant articles, not motions. So we are ready for Article 1. This is snow and ice for FY 2020. Anybody can Sheila, jump a question. In yes. <laughs> Perhaps, I mean, we have, okay, so now we're down to 21 different things to discuss. Is there anything, any of these articles that we are uh, opposed to? Uh, I We've think been talking about this for the last four meetings. Um, yeah. Is there anything that's up here that's that the board, based on our last discussions, uh, wants to pull it aside? Yeah, you'll see the color coding. I think Mike's going to speak to that. Our color coding is still there. It is. Um, I will. I would recommend that the board vote to remove all of the articles listed in green. That is Article 2, Article 5, Article 7, and Article 21. These are the free cash expenditures that all those department heads said we could wait till a later date to make sure that we have healthy free cash numbers. All right. And just to clarify that, it's, there's nothing to remove because we haven't placed them. So we True. would just make a motion to not place. Um, um, but I think, yeah, Jeff, to your point, we've had robust discussion, I think, on all of these. We have been come here. Um, I think at this point we can go down the line, make the motion, uh, certainly take FinCon 
input at each one, um, if need be, and, and go ahead. I think Jeff was getting that. Can we make a motion to place groups of articles <laughs> rather than individual articles? Oh, Jeff, wait. correct me if I'm wrong on that. Is that right, Jeff? Uh, you are, well, exactly. I mean, we. We've discussed this okay. uh, alongside our peers with the FinCom. Unless if the fin FinCom wants to opine in there, I think we're all under the same page here. All right. Uh, the ones we're going to table, we're going to table because we didn't have the money. We agreed on that. So that's two five seven twenty one. Everything else, but the most contentious one that we just got out of the way. So pull uh, two five seven and twenty one. So I'll, I'll tell you what. Can you humor me? Because this sounds like it's going to go pretty fast. Can we just do it by page? So you have page one. Just list all the articles you want to place. Um, I guess motion to place article one and three from page one of the proposed warrant. Okay. And Mike, what was yellow? yellow article four. Yellow. Like code? Uh, the yellow ones are the two that those department heads said they could look for other funding sources to try to cover those. The two that are in yellow are the $10,000 shortfall in the public safety building purchase services line item and the signs at the Wachusett 68 intersection. If you remember, both committees, uh, both the finance committee and the select board had a discussion as to the merits behind um, using the Chapter 90 funding to purchase the signs for Wachusett 68 versus using the free cash to do, do that rather than Chapter 90. So that is why that one was also demarcated in yellow. All right. Um, and so Sheila and Ian. Yeah, uh, Ted for, so, yeah. We were so close to uh, Ted, go ahead. You're on mute, Ted. I got you, Ted, one second. Ted, it is not. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, in the verse, I'm looking out of the warrants, there are in yellow. Am I looking at the wrong version? Uh, Ted, I will resend you the um, the link to the folders for this evening, but it's the one that's listed as ATM May 2020 warrant draft 14th of May 2020. Mike, do you just want to bring them up on the screen? Sure. In um, so Ted, we're having, I don't know if it's just me, but we're having a tough time hearing you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it may be. Ted, if you have any windows at all that you can close, I would start everything. Closing everything but Zoom. Um. Yeah, that is not what I was looking at. This this is better. Okay. So these are the five articles that are on page one. Okay. Let's give this another shot. We were getting there. We you have, have a motion. Do we? Yeah. Mitch, Mitch made a motion. Okay. I guess I can, you know, just for clarification, um, I guess, Mike, if the items in yellow, if they're able to find other funding sources, um, we get to either uh, what happens to that funding just for clarification sake for everybody on the call. So um, for the Article 4, which is the fire department there, um, she, we can either look to do an interdepartmental transfer, uh, which you'll see we'll have the expense report um, in the packet for this evening. That is because interdepartmental transfers require both approval of the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Uh, we could also go for a reserve fund for all or portion of that. That requires approval of just the Finance Committee. Um, so it would be finding things in the existing budget that are currently underspent to piece together to fill that gap. Okay, so I guess um, I would like to amend my motion through the Chair if I could to include Article 4 on that list. So the motion, just to re-emphasize, re is to um, vote to place Articles 1, 3, and 4 uh, as listed on page 1. Thank you. Jeff, you still okay with that second? Absolutely. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Or city aye. Stillings aye. Walker aye. Whiteman aye. Dib aye. Unanimous. Let's do this. Page two. Excuse me one second. Apologies Same concerns that. with that. Article six in yellow, Mike? Uh, that is the one where we 
uh, just talking about the merits of using free cash and uh, free cash versus chapter 90 funding, which is the other funding source that Director Buckley said he could use to get those signs for the intersection. Um, cool. And that's the discussion to have. So I, I at the moment obviously can't see everybody if they're raising their hand. And I want to say at the last discussion, there was um, a concern raised that Chapter 90 funds are already in short supply, A. And B, we had yet another accident at that intersection just this past week, yes? Yes. Yeah. So I guess I'll make a motion to uh, place Articles 6, 8, 9, 10, and 11 uh, as written on page 2 of the proposed warrant. This is 12 at the bottom. I'm sorry. And tw uh, is 12 in green? Mike, can you scroll down? Uh, I'll open in two separate seven. screens, but uh, amend my motion to include Article 12. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, and just for the record, these are all majority votes. We haven't had anything that needed uh, two thirds. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor? <laughs> Sorry, Ian had a. Oh. I just wanted to go over number 12 again. I mean, that school committee assessment, I, th I really think that we have an issue with that. So as a um, finance board. Uh, if I can just step in there real quick, and then Sheila, Leah does have her hand up as well. Uh, this is just to place the a sum of money article. This does not include the number behind that. OK. That was my comment was I thought it was just to place the article that it was a sum of money and not the actual dollar amounts for. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Robert City, aye. Stillings, aye. Walker, aye. Whiteman, aye. Good aye. Unanimous. Page three. Who's the dog that just voted aye? <laughs> they voted nay. He's a big fan of today. <laughs> Must have been from FinCom. <laughs> uh, motion to place articles 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 as written on page 3 of the warrant, uh, noting that there is no article 15. That numbering will be changed. That's because uh, I removed 15 prior to submitting it due to um, believing it could wait to another town meeting. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, is there any dis discussion other than Mike? What got removed that we're not remembering? Oh, that was a previous one before it was even submitted to the board. Oh. Is there any other discussion? Um, I have one comment or request, request, I guess, of the board. So traditionally, a citizen's petition would go last. Is there any feeling on where to place it? No, but I, Jeff, I have a question. Uh, yeah, I do, do too. She'll answer. Uh, yes. I have one too. <laughs> okay, so Jeff and then Mitch and then Ian. Um, I think you said Jeff first? Yep. Thank you. Uh, I think it is uh, important on where we place the citizen petition because this is the $30,000 that we, we don't have. So I think near the end would be. Uh, probably more prudent, but uh, I defer. And uh, going back to what uh, Dave George said, I believe, did he ask for an earlier placement on his, his article? Um, on Article 22? Dave is still on the call. Dave, what was the word you used? It wasn't early necessarily. It was a uh, beneficial. Well, yeah, what I was looking for, if, if, if possible, it's, it's a big ask, I realize, but to put it, the proposal on the best location on the warrant to give it the best chances of success. Which is where? I don't know. It's really, I guess that it's there's some kind of a term of art, some black magic in, in assigning these things. So I leave that up to you folks. I do know that it seems that people, I don't know if it's going to happen here with people in their cars, but towards the end of a meeting, people start to take off. You know, they may be there for, for particular items. Whatever happens, happens, and then people take off. So I, I don't know. So to Dave's point, and most towns do consider this in the regional district. Um, it is the school budget votes that tend to change the crowds. Whether they are coming because it's placed early or staying because it's placed late, we've seen towns take, get very creative with where they put the school budget. Let's put it last. 
maximize participation at this meeting. I like you know, the car you're already you getting. Good idea on that one. Okay. Right, so I'll tell you what. I I, I, I took this off track. We have a motion on the floor for page three's articles to be placed, and then once we do that and place them, we can actually circle back and make some commentary about um, the... Sheila, before... Uh, I know, Jeff, I just want to ask a question about um, the the citizen's petition article. Yep. And I want to revisit, uh, if we can, um, Mike, because I know your windows for the CARE Act is still open. I think Jeff brought it up, but I, I will admit that I probably dismissed it a little too early. Um, about using CARES Act funding to purchase the sign. Um, and it occurred to me over the last couple of weeks that it could be used to kind of inform people. Uh, like I know we have one coming in that the police uh, department, I think, put up um, emphasizing social distancing and hand washing. Um, is this something that would also be appropriate, Mike, in, in kind of under the auspices of that, be appropriate for a CARES Act request? Yep, we have put that in as a uh, inquiry to the Division of Local Services, and it is looking like that is going to be an approved um, use of the funding. Well, there you go. Yeah, but we yeah. would still be required to place it as it is a citizen's petition. No, absolutely. I just wanted to uh, to see if we could check in on that. So I guess my motion uh, stands as as is. And then I I apologize, Ian. Did you have another question before we vote? Uh, I was the same as Mitch because I thought that we were going to get that sign through the the care stack, so but if we have to still place it, we do. You have to place it. We have to place it, even though it's going to be already there. Uh, it will. So interestingly, as a you know point of order here, technically it could also pass. I think the understanding would be when the petitioner is given information that the sign is being funded elsewhere, that the petitioner might choose to make a motion for no action. Okay, correct. Yeah. Could it, Sheila, could it possibly be amended to written the words uh, uh, no. subsequent on maybe getting not getting the CARES Act uh, grant? I don't think those ones are on the floor, Jeff. No. Um, that also, it has to be the exact way it was written from the petition itself, um, which is why Do the language the is a little off. No. Okay. okay, put it near the, put it near the end with the... Uh, you'll have more information by the time the uh, the meeting comes up regarding uh, to potentially get the CARES grant, and then uh, we can have a motion from the floor ready. Well, cool. so let's let's circle back to order. I think there's a couple we want to move, but this, this was the motion to place everything on page three, and there was a second. And if there's no more discussion, I'll take the roll call. For city, I. Stolen site. Walker, I. Whiteman, I. Live, I. All right, last page. Oh, not the last page. Yeah, last page. Page four. Uh, motion to place articles 22 and 23 as written on page four of the proposed warrant. 22 was voted on first. Yep. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I meant my motion to uh, include only article 23 as we've already voted on article 22. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Or city aye. Tolling's aye. Walker aye. Whiteman aye. Dib aye. Unanimous. And now, um, just as a an administrative matter, uh, so I think the two that we were talking about moving were a uh, citizen's petition down at the bottom. We know Mike is remembering them anyway. And we just heard from Dave, where would you like the existing Article 22? Or actually, and I think Mitch made a, a Mitch, you right, you made a comment about the school budget. Oh, that was kind of a joke. But I mean, if you want to keep people in their seats, uh, clinging to what's going on at the town meeting, we could move the school budget to the end. I know that's not going to be popular, and we might uh, get some scorn. Um, and I don't want to get run over by anyone in their vehicle. But uh, <laughs> in reality, Dave, you know, if we want to place it early, um, that item is going to generate, I think, out of all of these, the most discussion. <laughs> Although you never know, the last meeting we had discussion on items that I really did not foresee having right. a discussion on. Right. Um, but you know, I would make a motion to to move that article uh, closer to the front of the meeting. Uh, I'm not sure if we need an exact number. Um, so I would suggest we place it either after nine, current nine, or after ten. Because the first few articles are 
uh, are essentially what would have been on the special, which is moving free cash money, um, or you know, there's one for the water tank, so that's enterprise. And then Article 10 actually begins what would traditionally have been our annual meeting. Um, it gives people a chance to get through the process of a few quote unquote easy ones using the new handhelds um, and to get the swing of things relative to comments and back and forth in the voting process. I was looking and thinking to place it after 10, so after to hear the annual reports of the town officers and committees and before we get into the school budgets, both BAPAC and what you said is what I was thinking. Okay. Is everybody okay good. with that as to form? Um, We're hoping then to place the, the proposed planning bylaw uh, to become Article 11 with all of the subsequent articles shifting down one numeric number. There you go. Thank you. Is that, was that a motion? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, that was a motion. And were you including the citizen's petition to move to the end? Uh, I will amend to include the citizens' petition to move to the end. Okay. And I'll amend my second to uh, agree with Mitch's motion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any more discussion? Can Mike, we, is there anybody? Can we still leave on the school at Article 13 now? Um, <laughs> you're going to have half, you're going to have everybody leave. That? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of important stuff on here, and I always like to see most participation, but. Yeah. Can I make a recommendation on that? Mike, go ahead. I would, I would like to see that move towards the end because where we have a drive-in town meeting, if people want to leave midway through, that would create somewhat of a traffic issue. That's right. It's moving. Uh, I'll tell, I'll tell you what. Can we let's finish this one because we've had an amended motion. Poor Tamika, she's going to have notes that are fifteen years old. We have an amended motion to move the uh, resident petition and, and to move the planning board article. Let's do that and then talk about the school. So all in favor? For city, aye. Stolings, aye. Aye, Karai. Wait. Goodbye. All right. All right. You know what? I'll just go ahead and make a motion then. Uh, per the town administrator's uh, recommendation, <laughs> I want that included, Tamika. Mark my words. Right, right there. Uh, <laughs> MMW. <laughs> To move uh, Article uh, 12, now Article 13, um, to become the last article of the meeting prior to the citizens' petition. Article 19. Right, would that be Article 19? Yep. Article 19. I'll for second the administrator's with recommendation. I'll second with the question for discussion. Okay, and I see. Uh, I. I saw her shaking her head, so Karen will be next after should you. Right? We, should we move um, Bay Path also and just do both schools at the end? No. Just for, I, Wachusett is the one that generally draws the most, but just, I don't have a preference necessarily. I'll amend, I'll amend my motion if I can through the chair to include the Bay Path article. I'll, that I'll amend my second. Thank you. All right, Karen. Well, the different choices that the Finn. FinCom has been talking about is is that that would mean that we could get all the way to the bottom and have to revisit every single last one of those articles that are for the budget. What do you, can you clarify that, Karen? Uh, depending upon the different choices that the FinCom decides, we could have to revisit everything, all of the other budget articles, because the budget would not pass. And we would not have a, a funded budget if this didn't pass away, depending upon what our choices are. We have many different things on the table right now for the budget, but if we were to, this could create a problem past, we'd have to revisit everything else because we wouldn't have a balanced budget. So Karen, would you then recommend the articles be placed towards the beginning of the meeting? Yep. And I guess as a follow-up question, Mike, do you think that pre creates logistical issues given the circumstances surrounding this meeting structure being wildly different than anything we've ever done before? We can work with logistics. I did. That is an excellent point that Karen is making. Um, that I just cut out. I just got a notification. My apologies. Um, uh, that is an excellent point that Karen is making. That um, there are some options on the table uh, with the finance committee in terms of the budget, be in terms of whether we use stabilization or not, whether other budget budget articles 
fail or pass um, that could impact whether or not we have to go back uh, because this is our biggest budget line item there. So I think that is a good point that she is making there. We'll make it work no matter what. We, we're, we've got our walkthrough meeting planned for the town meeting site, um, in which case we can just make sure that our, our uh, traffic guards who are our fire personnel um, know to plan ahead and if it means putting in a secondary exit route for people to leave during the meeting different from the one that people will leave at the end of the meeting we can certainly accommodate that as well. I guess my, um, real quick I know Carol your hand up. Sheila can I just ask a question to Karen and Ian um, uh, because Mike you're talking about so you're, we're collecting the remotes that we're using um, and, and my big thing is trying to maximize participation in these meetings simply because there's so much going on. We have a lot of things that over the last couple of years we've addressed that are very important in the community. Um, I love to see maximum participation. Karen and Ian, uh, do you think really the placement of this is going to become a big deal based on the discussions that you've been having in terms of the budget? Or is this something that, that you think we can have resolved prior to town meeting? Um, there's many different options on the table right now all of which could be have to change right on the floor that evening. We're going to have to have many different versions of the budget, um, whereas the Wachusa Regional School District is, I don't know, 57, 58, 60, some, the largest part of our budget. It's just smarter just to get it over with. I realize, uh, believe me, I am just as angry every single year when all of the elephants leave the room. I get it. However, it is the biggest part of our budget, and if we have a problem, we don't want to have to sit down and go back through every single last one of them. We we looked at we're, we're looking right now at maybe four different budgets um, for that night, based on what we're hearing. Options A through C. Very quick, Sheila. Everybody, I gotta go. I have another Zoom at eight o'clock for um, in California, so I gotta run. See you later. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, Carol. So I guess then, uh, Sheila, can I ask our board how they feel about about the logistics of that? Um, if, if anybody else has any strong opinions, if not, I'll go ahead and rescind my motion uh, based on, uh, I guess, FinCom input, uh, not realizing that it would interfere with process. I mean, it might be okay if, if you don't mind, Sheila, because the rest of the articles, well, I guess it depends how the school goes, how the budget's presented. I was going to say the rest of the articles could go fairly quickly, so if people aren't expecting it to be a three or four hour long meeting, but if really tough decisions are made based on how the school budgets go, then I guess it could turn into a much longer meeting. I was thinking people might not be as eager to leave with it being a drive-in um, set up, and it's, a little, it's an earlier start time. And everything. I'm just really worried about the logistics of people leaving. And They'll coming. leave. They're gonna leave. They're gonna leave. Bugs will be coming out too by then. Well, I, I don't think we know. I, I mean, how will we know? Parking is tough. Everyone will see you leave. There's not going to be an easy, surreptitious way to do it. Um, we are doing our level best to try to keep this meeting short. So. I don't know how many people will leave on this one. I, I don't, I, I don't, we don't know, right? Also, to Sheila's point, too, I mean, from a logistical standpoint, we don't know how the pandemic thing is going to play out. I mean, uh, you're also, if you have multiple points where people leave mass exodus, have to interact with exchanging their clickers, things like that. Um, it just, it creates a logistical and health issue that doesn't need to be created. I don't know if anyone else has any strong feelings on that, but... I mean, if you put the bu if you put the school budget last, and it passes one way, or it fails, then we have to change the whole budget. We have to figure out how to get the rest of the budget passed. Passed. That's the problem. That's what we're trying to tell you is that, that right. there's there's three or four different options, and I mean the schools have the deciding key. All right, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead then and rescind my my original motion if I'm able to do that, Sheila. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. So as it I'll, rescind, I'll rescind my second then. Thank you. All right. So as it stands right now, everything has been left the same with the exception of the planning board zoning bylaw, which is now immediately after the traditional first annual meeting placement of the officers. 
uh, article and we've moved the uh, resident petition down at the end which is fairly, fairly traditional um, as well and, and in fact if we're not moving the schools then that keeps us pretty much within an hour typical town meeting schedule relative to the budget items coming in line. Great. Mike, maybe if you could just plan around the logistics if there need to be any contingencies there with people leaving at a certain time. Will do. Maybe we could make an announcement that, hey, listen, you're expected to stay in the <laughs> meeting and you got to, yeah, I mean, you got to cause a frenzy just up and drive and I no, I, I don't know if Randy is still with us. I don't think he, he might have been on for a little while, but it's not a terrible idea to suggest to the moderator that, you know, it, it don't cause any, any dangerous situations by, by trying to leave if there are people that are, you know, sitting with their car doors half open and, and want to do something to consider. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. We got through it, and it's not even 9 o'clock. Um, Jeff, guess what? It's your turn. It's the Moses Howe Award. Oh, man. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing to work here. Hold on. Oh, I had it working. Jeez. Hey, all right. So I just want to uh, brief the board real quick. That our Moses Howe Award is just about ready to go. Uh, um, it's been uh, laser etched, and we've got the brass templates in there waiting on the uh, the 2019 insert. Uh, I just uh, just wanted to show you this is where we're at. I think under the circumstances with everything going on, I'd like to just table uh, how, how we're going to present it and uh, you know what the circumstances are for the presentation. So I think if we can just table it for uh, at least one or two meetings, uh, we can revisit how we're going to go about this. So that's what we are. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Jill, um, I just want to adjourn my meeting, if I could, because I don't think you need us. OK. It was good to have you. Um, before that happens, if I could just, I was double checking something uh, here on the warrant um, that we had here. Similar to how things have to be called out, it's saying including free cash. We also need to say including stabilization, if that is the case there. I know that is one of the options of the six options that Finance Committee does have there. Um, yes. So that warrant article could be just amended to include the words and stabilization funds after free cash. That doesn't mean we have to use them. That where we have to go is in the motions. This is just allowing us to use it in the end. Do you need a motion for that? Do you need a motion for that, Mike? Uh, yeah, in order to amend, yeah. And again, that doesn't mean we have to do that. That's just the option. Oh. And really? Any what? Um, we have not put the words stabilization available to balance this budget in many, many years. That is an enormous step to take. If we add that to the language, that means technically on the floor, people could vote to use stabilization for every article. It's got to be two thirds, though, for stabilization, right, Sheila? Sure. It's a high bar, but it's, yeah. I, I, Okay, so, I mean, full disclosure, I'm going to come at this a little differently. We've had years, Karen's going to remember too, certainly not years with an international pandemic, but years where we were far farther from a balanced budget entering into the final weeks before town meeting than we are right now. We're, we're close. I don't know that, not that close. adding the word stabilization to our normal budgeted articles, um, that's, a, that's a big step for us. I will say that um, I did speak with um, the town accountant this morning after we got a call with um, the Department of Revenue today uh, with some further guidance and we do believe we will have a budget proposal for the Finance Committee that does not include uh, stabilization funds but still allows us to have a balanced budget based off of the new guidance that we're getting from the state. Um, I did say at a previous meeting that the state was highly recommending we use stabilization and now they're saying to um, balance the budgets in a different way. And then if stabilization is needed, address that in the fall after we have more solid numbers there, which I know has come up in discussions that we've had as well. And that is something that Dan and I will be proposing to the Finance Committee on Thursday as well. But since that has come up in a bunch of conversations, that's the only reason I brought it up. So can we leave it as is? Yeah. That's very different, Mike, than kind of what we've been hearing. It's just 
this late in the game, um, that's yeah, development for sure. Yep. I, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to know more about that too because we haven't talked about that. And then can we can we change it in the future, Mike? Then before the meeting, I think it's once it's signed and posted, it can and it be amended at that point. But I was going to ask if BOS is also posted for Thursday's FinCom meeting. Could be BO, and BOS has a quorum. Could BOS could we change? Have a motion to change the motion if, based on the discussions on Thursday, it seems like that's prudent. Um, so long as it's not a, so long as the motion to sign and post has not been made at that point, it's just the placements at that point. So you guys are looking at you. You would need to hold off tonight to post. Is that sign and post? Yeah. Is this a select board, Sheila? Yeah. And I think Anita said she was hoping to was hoping for us to have it ready to go by the eighth, also, so it could be posted at the same time as the election warrant. Although it doesn't have to be posted until the twelfth. I think. Could we do that on Thursday. I mean, that's would be before the eighth. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. 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 Um, so Thursday's meeting, I know that the board, uh, that the FinCom has quite a, a lot of discussion to go on the budget. I don't think um, we have to get going on that, and then we need to look at the warrants. I don't think that we want to, I, I know myself, I don't know how the rest of the committee feels, but we can't keep switching gears here now. We have to focus on getting this budget done, and we have a lot of discussion, and from what Mike just said, looks like we're going to have a lot of discussion that's new. So I would rather not have to have another two or three hour meeting on Thursday after tonight. I'd rather focus the FinCom focus on the budget instead of playing around with the posting. Well, um, Can you guys do that on Monday? No, Sheila? no. I this is not playing around with the posting. This is addressing the fact that you just talked about using stabilization, which would need to have been added to the warrant language. So. Okay. Um, but I, we don't I, know. I, After what Mike just told us, that that's news to us that we didn't know. Yes, that's news as of today. Okay. Okay. So I. So Karen, um, to your point, I hope that our presence alone on Thursday would not engender three hours. That you would need three hours to talk about your finances. And I think where people were headed was if the board had a quorum and needed to make that one vote to change the language and add the word stabilization, that they would have the opportunity to do that on Thursday. Otherwise, we're not meeting again until the evening of Monday, the 8th. Wait, that's not even right. When are we meeting again? The 15th. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could schedule a special meeting. But I, I, you caught me off guard with stabilization. I'll be honest. When we're looking at a, a $150,000 delta, this, this doesn't strike me as that moment. We've fought for over a decade to... Rebuild that stabilization. You didn't tell me till Sunday morning. I couldn't call you at fucking eight o'clock on a Sunday morning. Really? Oh, let him go. I want to hear this. No, no, just yeah. he's been muted. Uh, I don't know. Get, get well, a minute, Dan. Um, yes, go ahead. You're gonna find from the FCC that's gonna cut into that budget too. Thanks, At our last, last finance board meeting, we did talk. Well, last three weeks we talked about using stabilization. I would rather see us not use stabilization at all. And if Mike is telling us that he's got new numbers for Thursday night, then leave it off for now. The problem is we can't put it back on. Well, then, then we can address that at another meeting, but leave it off for now. T Tom, you can't put it back on. We can so do are it you saying meeting. they don't have another meeting to do that? That's what, I'm, that's what we, they're saying. You could do it at, at the fall meeting. You could, you could get it. The budget arranged so that you, if you had to add stuff, then you could. So you, you don't, don't want to. What you're saying then is to go into the into the the meeting without a, a uh, balanced well, budget. We have to have a balanced budget. So well, then we got to be cut. Well, so we've <laughs> well, we've let the budget leave town meeting with a deficit a few times. It's obviously not ideal. Nobody wants to do it. 
you do it with an assumption in, in some cases <laughs> the cash will come through and, and you're going to get allowed to balance it in the fall, which is what Tom is bringing up. I think what he's adding to that is if things go as sideways as some are saying they might, that the town will have to go back in the fall and at that point will it be in such a, a situation relative to the cherry sheet that stabilization will have to be put on the table at that point. And I thought I saw Ted. Ted, we couldn't hear you before. I don't know if we can hear you. I'll try again. Okay. Um, I thought we were looking at stabilization for one or two articles only. It's more of a dollar amount is what we were talking. Yeah. Okay. Leah? I guess my point was on Thursday, not, not sidetracking FinCom, but listening to their discussion and if at the end of their meeting it seems like stabilization is the way to go, then if there's a quorum of us, then we make that motion and at the end of their meeting and not based on the information that is presented. I think we've had a quorum at most of the FinCom meetings, um, but if there's new information coming out, I, I hesitate to put it on now and not be able to take it back off, but if it is realized on Thursday that we really should have it, I'd like to have that opportunity. I don't know. But I understand Karen not wanting it to turn it into a long, drawn out. Well, I mean, we have a FinCom here with us now. Like, what would you like us to do? I know that Mike just threw out kind of a, uh, you know, um, something very different. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to say, uh, you know, threw something in here. But it's what would be most helpful to move the process forward? Because we're going around and around. And is it, does it come down to us holding a special meeting? Does it, what helps get to where we need to be? We need to. We need Thursday. We need to know what what he's saying and, and where it's coming from. And do we need to use stabilization? We, we looked at a number. Isn't bad for stabilization fund usage to balance instead of cutting positions. I don't think any, any of us want to start going into the two major accounts and cutting. That's not what we want to do. But we need to know what where this other money is coming from at this point. We, we found some money based on things that you're working on as, as a contract, but we need to know more of what Mike is saying. Okay, so let's do this. We have some chances to not have to take a very big step, which is adding the word stabilization into our warrant budget articles, and we have four days. We can, we are already posted, right, Mike, for Thursday? Yep. Yep. Um, we do need Observe. to ensure through Mike that there will be a quorum of us there that night. And if something happens that the FinCom strongly believes that stabilization needs to be put on the table, then we revisit. Um, what we've done tonight is place all the warrant articles, so we're actually in you know reasonable shape. All we will have to do at that point is to Leah's description at the end of our meeting before we adjourn, um, vote to sign the warrant for posting. I think that's what we're looking for at this point, Sheila. Okay. Is that everybody comfortable with that? Yeah? Yes, sounds great. <laughs> sounds fantastic. I think, fantastic. Can I just say, I know FinCon, you got, I think, I sense that you don't always appreciate us being there, and but I appreciate this collaborativeness that we've had. I feel like this budget season has been a lot more productive in the back and forth. Um, throughout. So I appreciate your willingness to kind of work with us and hear where what we were thinking and help guide us as to what you're looking at. So I appreciate it. Thank you. We were just trying to get this thing done. We're trying to make it right for everybody like you guys are too. All right. All right. I think we can move on to new business. Yeah? Annual can I take a, a motion oh. to turn? Or do you need us again? Well, you're good. Go. I kind of like your company, and I don't know. No. <laughs> I get a motion to adjourn. Motion made. You get a second. Second. Roll call. O'Malley, aye. Purcell, aye. Narwald, aye. Bruchala, aye. Dave had to leave mid-meeting, so he's no longer here. Okay.
So the motion passes. Thank you. Guys, good luck. Have a good night. Nice. We'll see you Thursday. See you all Thursday. Thank you. Annual report. Uh, you'll see in your folders for this evening there is a Google Sheets, not Google Sheets, Google Doc account um, with the nominations that we have received for um, dedication of the annual town report. We do have a in memoriam section that we have yet to get a, uh, a nomination for. However, we have three nominees for the dedication, and that is um, Margaret Nardowitz, our first town administrator, uh, Gary Kelleher, the previous DPW superintendent, and Liam Dearden, our newest Eagle Scout. Can I, um, can I go ahead and make a motion for the in Can we include our officer? in that for the annual town report. Can I nominate here or is that? So, so this one's so hard, Mitch, you can, but his death won't have happened within the fiscal year we're reporting on. It's a bizarre thing to have people get these reports and it's the year that is long past. Uh, I, we've had this happen multiple times, but, and, and I mean, it's, is it a law? Of course not. Understood, okay. So do we do a motion to approve these uh, for the nominations? Mike? Uh, you can approve all, some, none. It's up to the board's pleasure at that point. I, I like, uh, I'm in, Mr. Jeff, uh, I like the idea of Liam uh, Deeran, uh, first because he's a Rowland resident and uh, obviously because of the, uh, the uh, unselfish uh, work that he's done for the War Memorial on there. I think it would be fitting. Who nominated could I ask? I'd have to go back and look, to be honest. Oh. I, uh, I'd have to go back and look. I went to Laura's email. Um, I agree with that, Jeff. I just, I, yeah. I mean, I appreciate the other two names, too. Uh, they're employees who departed us. Uh, but, I mean, this is probably the, the spirit of the uh, dedication for something that's unsung. And I think this would be a, a great opportunity for, for uh, Liam. Um, yeah. And we can have more than one, right? Like, yes. Uh, we did a couple of years ago because two uh, two great women passed together from the, uh, the historical commission, Mrs. Brakey and Mrs. Viner, in there. But they were there was a link. There was a linkage there, not because we had more than one nominee. So. Yeah, they had they had worked together for. You know what I you know what I like you know what I would like is uh, the Dearden family. You know, could you could you nominate the family? Um, because when we spoke during that uh, ceremony in there, I mean they they are symbolic of what is best of Rutland in there. Uh, two great kids, Connor and Liam. Connor who's still in the Air Force Academy in there, and uh, they're just uh, you know a metaphor for what is right with uh, society, I think that would be a nice special surprise is to uh, nominate uh, Liam and his family, the Deirdre and family of Roland. My I have no objections to any of the names. If we can have more than one, you know, I've heard from a lot of folks around town. Um, they really appreciate Margaret's contributions to where we are today. Same thing with Gary. I know uh, he was pretty popular um, in terms of what he did for the community as well including his own staff. So um, certainly I think everybody's worthy and deserving. Um, so, I mean, I, I would be fine with, with all three. Amen. It's a, it's a weird thing for me. I do, we do, and I agree with you. I mean, right, Gary, I think nine years and, and Margaret left big shoes to fill, Mike, that you fill. <laughs> uh, but to Jeff's point, I don't know that I would mix them with Liam, if that makes sense. I'd almost want to choose right. one or the other. They're either right. the Dearden family or our employees that are gone. I don't know. I'm torn. Yeah, can, I, can I be evil for a second? I mean, uh, they left. They left us. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like <laughs> if, if you're going to nominate a, the town Board against you, hey, thanks for well, I mean, you know, I think for to that point, I mean, Mike's doing a great job, and we all have fond memories of Mike, but he might be leaving us too. And 
I like to think that he put us in a better footing moving forward than we would have been without him. Um, you know, and to Sheila's point, I think, you know, Liam did, uh, Dearden family is very different, but I mean, we could have more than one, um, folks in town nominated these folks because they want to see him in. It's, it's really their report. Um, and, you know, realistically to differentiate the contributions that Liam had uh, with the other 10 employees, it just depends on how their dedication is written up and we could do a really classy job with that uh, if we wanted to. You know, I, I say that we just put it where it's due. I agree. I was just curious, I was curious on who submitted the nomination in there. Uh, that might show some insight on uh, how it could be written or what the intent is of the nominator. Um, before we do that motion, so Mike, that list was very short. We don't have anyone for In Memoriam? Uh, let me check the folder one last time. Is that missing? Uh, let me, I will check real quick while the board is, you can talk about those, um, but I will get those real quick. Do we, do we want, I'll make a motion to to approve um, the nomination list for dedication to the annual report um, as nominated by the folks of the town. All three? All three. Yes, All three. All right. We do have an in memoriam. Uh, was there a second? I could, I'll second it, sure. Jeff, Jeff will second it. Any more discussion? I have a question. Do we want to keep it as Liam Dearden, or do we want to um, say Liam Dearden and family? I, I think you would make a significant impact if you did and family to his family. I'll amend my motion to, uh, to add and family. Why don't you do it as a special recognition? That's a great idea, Wayne. Love it. Okay. You got that? So we're going to differentiate um, the report dedication. Um, kind of sounds like Liam and the Dearden family as residents sort of get a top billing. Um, I don't want to quite phrase it that way, but I think I think I kind of get what Wayne meant, and I'm sure Laura will make it pretty. Uh, and then also to um, honor the people that the town has uh, members of recommended. Yep. Okay. Uh, no. All in favor. For city aye. Still in aye. Still in aye. Wait, man, aye. Goodbye. Can I ask a que question? Yeah. To the chair, real quick. Yeah. Um, so you talked about in memoriams on there. Uh, are we still tracking uh, like the, the the oldest the eldest resident with the cane and things like that? I noticed that Mrs. Taylor, uh, who was a uh, uh, she was a mainstay of Naquag when I was growing up, they just turned a hundred uh, years old. Um, could we maybe? I know it's not on the agenda, and I meant to do it, but is it something that maybe that uh, the TA could put together, uh, recognizing if I. Uh, we did some research. Mrs. Taylor, who lives on, uh, I believe, in the Inwood Road sure. area. So, sure. uh, Mike, 100 years old. Mike, where this got left is that the original Rutland Boston Post cane is, I believe, in the old safe. You look like yep. you're nodding. Yeah. And we were working at one point with Bay Path to get replicas made because the families don't return the cane, right, after the family member is gone. And so we, the idea was that you would continue to make replica canes and present them as time goes on with whoever the oldest resident is in a given year. And we've we've lost track of that, I want to say at least two or three years now, where we haven't given it to anyone. And I'd have to look back through records to find out who the last person was who got it. Okay? All right. Yeah. Anita will remember. She, um, um, in memoriam. We have two nominations. Uh, Stephen Kolofsky, a lifetime resident who with lots of family who has given much to the town, and Elaine Suhaki. Both passed away this past year in the town of Rome. Suhaki's go way, way back. Great family. I remember them from the uh, Fife and Drum, the original Rutland Fife and Drum. Wayne, you remember them. Oh, yeah. Is there any issues yes. with um, having both of them? 
I think realistically, if somebody wants to nominate the annual town report in Orion Page, the town clearly means a great deal to those families. Um, and I, again, I would have no problem with all folks in. Let's do it. And then get a motion. Motion to include uh, nominated members of In Memoriam um, as uh, submitted uh, to Mike and presented to the board. Kowalski and Sulaki. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Do, uh, all in favor? For city, aye. Walker, aye. Stallings, aye. Clayman, aye. Goodbye. All right, unanimous. And now we have our transfers, which are in your folder. Uh, actually, no. So what's in the folder this evening is a uh, the expense report, where you can see highlighted what we will be presenting as a um, as transfers that are needed. Uh, I'll be meeting with our town, excuse me, town accountant Dan Haynes on Wednesday to go over how much we should uh, transfer into those. Uh, we have until July 15th for the town's bylaws to do those transfers. Uh, but this is just a notification of which accounts those will need to be done for. Those, again, these are transfers from line item to line item, um, not from reserve fund to line item. So we don't get any action on that tonight? No, this is just an information so you can see where it's needed. Thank you. Next, down to correspondence, uh, the Maya letter. Uh, you'll see in your drives a letter that we received from Maya, the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Agency, who is our insurance provider, letting us know that they have released $25 million from their savings account reserve fund to uh, help our cities and towns that they represent for insurances to lower premiums for next year. Nice. Um, we are still waiting to see what exactly uh, that impact has on us. We should have that by the end of the week. Um, so hopefully that helps us with our budget issues that we were talking earlier. But um, it's in response to the current pandemic situation as um, they understand that many cities and towns will be facing revenue issues in the next fiscal year. Um, also, I just see Anita did just call back in. I did let her back into the Zoom call. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to say, Anita. Hmm. Maybe she just dropped us and got back. Oh, maybe. I could die. So, as we know, we uh, talked about number 126 and took action. Is there any other business to come before the board? Uh, just to, one last thing, Sheila, through the chair, if I could real quick. Um, I know some surrounding communities have received threats regarding uh, police officers, their homes um, being targeted. So I want to make sure that we say everybody stay safe. Um, obviously, it's not something we want to see, but we're living in a really terrible situation right now. Uh, but, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, we will see everyone on Thursday here on the board. Um, we all have. Sheila. On, yep. on that note, I uh, most likely won't be able to make uh, Thursday. Just want to make sure you do have that important quorum. Okay. Oh, you mean Thursday night? Yeah. So if you make sure you get a commitment, I probably won't be able to make it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, just one last time, I would like to say, um, for those of you who do plan to attend either of the services for Detective Sanjay, just please follow the guidelines of those that are there to help direct people from the Massachusetts State Police. Um, the current pandemic situation makes it so that everything is just interesting logistic-wise to begin with. Um, so please be patient with all of those who are guiding the, uh, the public who is in attendance. Um, and thank you for showing your respect. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? City aye. Walker aye. Dillings aye. Statement aye. Good night, everybody.